Hello everyone, welcome to our series presented to you by Bioinformatics for All. In this video, we will talk about lists. At the end of this video, you will be able to create, name, and modify a list. As I explained in the last video, list is a one-dimensional data structure that contains heterogeneous data types. It can contain basic data types such as numeric, character, and logical. Also, it can contain scalar, vector, matrix, and list. If you didn't watch my third and fourth video, please go watch them so you will get better idea about what is one-dimensional data structure and what is heterogeneous data type. To create a list, you need to use the list function. When you use the list function, you need to put comma between each element. We have two options to create a list. Either we write the values directly inside the list, as it's shown here, or we can assign the values first. So for example, here we assign the first element to A, second element to B, third element to C, and then we use the list function and put the variable's name inside the list function. So here in exercise one, first example is to write the values directly inside the list. And the second example, we will assign the values first, then we will create a list. So let's go to our studio. In our first example, we are creating a list which has a vector, a matrix, and a numeric number. So let's run it. And as you can see here, our first element in the list is a vector. Our second element in the list is a matrix, and our third element in the list is a numeric number. Next example, here we are assigning the values first. So we are assigning a vector of 303 to A. We are assigning a matrix of nine numbers to B, and we are assigning the number 100 numeric number to C. So now we are creating a list and writing the names of the variable inside of it and printing it. Here we have our new list, which has three elements, a vector, matrix and numeric. In exercise two, we will learn how to name a list. So to name a list that already exists, we need to use the names function. So here we have our list we just created. We want to name it, so we will use the names function and we will assign a vector to it, a vector of three names, my vector, my matrix, and my number. So let's go to our studio. So here we are giving the names to the element inside the list. So Let's run it. And as you can see here, our vector is named my vector, our matrix is named my matrix, and our numeric number is named my number. To create and name the element inside the list at the same time, what you need to do is inside the list function, you need to write your element name first equal to your element, followed by a comma and second element name equal to your second element and so on. So in exercise three, what we will do is we will create a list which will have gold, silver, and oil price for March and April. To create a very simple list, we will use the list function. We will have three vectors in it. The first vector is for the gold price for March and April. Second vector is for the silver price for March and April. And the third vector is for the oil price for March and April. So let's go to our studio and try it. So here is our basic list. It's the most basic list you can get from data we have. So here's our first vector for the gold prices, second vector for the silver prices, and the third vector for the oil prices. So let's run this command. And as you can see here, the first element, second element, and the third element. If you want to name your element and create a list at the same time, just after you use the list function, you write the gold price equal to first vector, silver price equal to the second vector, oil price equal to the third vector. So let's run this command. And as you can see here, gold price is for two months, silver price for two months, and oil price for two months. If we want to specify the month inside the list, we can do that also. So here, same with the previous one, just inside the vector, we can write March equal to 1,500, and here April equal to 1,700, and so on with the others. So let's run this command. And as you can see here, gold price for March is 1,500, silver price for March is 13, and oil price for March is 55. So what if I want to specify the value? So for example, dollar per ounce. Here I want you to note something. Here when you use 
gold price as a one word without a space, we just wrote it. But if you want to put space or use signs or use brackets, you need to use the quotation mark. So let's run this command and see the outcome. So you can see here gold price dollar per ounce for March is 1,500. Silver price dollar per ounce for March is 13. Oil price dollar per barrel is 55. So this is how list is useful that you can specify everything you want. And remember the example in the previous video when we named our student in the matrix, we used the list to name it. And now you understood how to do it. So how to access a list? Elements of the list can be accessed by the index of the element in the list. It can either be accessed by single brackets or double brackets. But what's the difference between single and double brackets? Single brackets informs you that there is a car in that part of the trailer. Just gives you an information. But double bracket brings the car down to you from the trailer. Single bracket returns the sublist, not the content. And double bracket returns the content. So in this example, we will create a new list, March prices for gold, silver, and oil. And we want to learn from this exercise the difference between the single and double bracket. So to access the third element in the list, we will need to write our list name, single brackets, and write three. Same with double brackets, we will need to write the name of the list, double brackets, and three. Here we are accessing both, we are accessing the third element in the list, which is oil price. This is the first, this is the second, and this is the third. So what we want to do here, here we are saying we have 135 barrels of oil. So we are assigning it to G, so we can do simple mathematic operation. So here what we are saying is, we are saying take this value, oil price one, which is the third element between single brackets, and multiply it to 135, give me the value. And in this one here is saying, take this value, oil price two, the one with the double brackets, multiply it with the 135 and give me the value. So let's go to RStudio and try it. First, let's create our list, our new list, March prices. So now we have gold price, silver and oil price in our new list. Now let's access the third element with the single brackets. It says oil price 55. And let's access the third element again with double brackets here. And let's assign 135 to G. Now we will do simple mathematic operation, multiplication. So here we are going to use the outcome from the oil price one, multiply it with 135. As you can see here, R gave an error. It says non-numeric argument. So here, as you can see, the difference between this outcome and this outcome, here it says oil price 55. So here is a sublist, but here is a value. So if we run this command, you will see that the outcome is 7,425. So this is the difference between single bracket and double bracket. This is to know what's in the list, but this is to get the content of the list. So in this exercise, we'll learn how to access two elements or more at once. If you wanna access two elements next to each other, you can use the column between the number. So here we are accessing the elements from one to two. If you want to access elements away from each other, you will use the comma between the number. So here we are accessing the first and the third element. If you want to access the second element in the first vector, so this is our first vector, gold price, and the second element in it is 1,700. If you want to access that number, you will use double brackets, double brackets. The first double brackets is for the first element in this list, and the second double brackets is for the second element in the vector. So let's go to our studio. So let's run this command. We are accessing the first and the second element in the list, which is gold price and silver. It's gold price here and silver. So here we are accessing the first and the third elements in the list. So let's run this command. And as you can see, gold price and all price. So here's the gold price, the first and the third. So in the last one, we will access the second element in the first vector. So let's run this, and as you can see, 1,700. If your elements in the list are named, 
you can access them by using the dollar operator. So you write your list name followed by the dollar sign and write element you want to access. Here we want to access gold price. The advantage of this dollar operator is that it can do partial matching. So if you write just gold, it will get you gold price values. Let's go to R and now we want to access the gold price. So when we run it and you can see 1500 and 1700. So if we do just if we write gold, it's still it's going to give you the same output. In exercise seven, we will learn how to modify a list. So if you want to modify a list, you need to do reassignment to the element you want to change. In our case here, we want to change the gold price from ounce to gram. So here, what we are going to do is first we are going to access the gold price elements. So here we are going to write list name between double brackets. I'm going to write gold price. I'm going to assign to it a vector of two numbers. It's the price of gold in grams in March and April. So let's go to our studio. In exercise seven here, we are going to do reassignment to the gold price. So let's run. And now, as you can see, I only changed the gold price from ounce to gram. In this exercise, we will learn how to add or remove elements from a list. To add element to a list, we need to write our list name between double brackets, quotation mark. We will write our element's name. Here we are adding platinum price and we will assign a vector of prices to it. 600 for the March price and 750 for the April price. To remove a component from a list, here we want to remove the oil price. We will write list name again, double square brackets, quotation mark. We will write the element we want to remove and we will assign null to it. So let's go to our studio. So here we are going to add platinum price to our list. So let's run this command. And as you can see, we have golden price, silver price, oil price, and our new element is added. Here we want to remove the oil price from our list. So let's run this command. And as you can see, there is no more oil price in our list. In this exercise, we will learn how to merge lists. So to merge lists, we need to use the merge list function. So we have our old list here. Now we need to create a new list. So we will create a copper price list which contain the copper price for March and April. And after that, we will use the merge function and combine the old list prices and the new list copper prices. To view the structure of the list, we can use the structure function. So let's go to our studio and try this. So let's go to exercise nine. So first of all, let's create the copper price list. So now here we have the copper price 2.1 for March and 2.3 for Apple. Now what we will do is we will merge this list and assign this merged list to updated list. So let's run this command. And as you can see here, we have gold price, silver price, platinum price, and our newly merged list copper price. So if you want to view the structure of the list, you can use the structure function. So we can use it here. And as you can see here, it gives you list of four and gold price is numeric silver price also numeric and the rest also they are all numeric and consist of two numbers. So in exercise 10, we will learn how to convert list to vectors. So to convert list to vectors, we need to use the unlist function. So we use the unlist function and we put our list name inside of it. So our list name is updated list. So if we go to our studio and run this command, as you can see here, we will have the gold price one, gold price two, silver price one, and so on. So we reached the end of the video five in our series timeline. Next video will be about functions and important packages. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching.